everybody. Very good morning. This is me, Vinu Venkatesh, on behalf of Sai Education for Competitive Examinations. So let's continue our discussion on data interpretation, which is what we've been doing in the past two classes. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, we'll start with uh, question number four. Uh, let me just enlarge this a bit because, yeah. So the following table gives the percentage of marks obtained by seven students. These are the seven students in six different subjects, okay? Maths, chemistry, physics, geography, history, and computer science in an examination. Study the table and answer the questions based on it. The numbers in the brackets give the maximum marks in each subject. So they have not given the uh, numbers in the brackets. I'll tell you where they have given it. Um, So these are the marks that the maximum marks for that subject okay that we have to assume they should have given it in a better way but unfortunately they did not so number one what was the aggregate of marks obtained by Sajal in all the six subjects so aggregate means what aggregate means um, average okay in all six six subjects so how do you think uh, you will uh, attempt this question you will add up all the marks and by the way these are let me be yes these are percentages so you cannot add it like that you have to find the actual marks so this is Sajal and these are all her marks in the percentage marks in all the six subjects so because these are percentage we should know the actual marks okay they said they have given the maximum marks in each subject so how do you calculate the actual marks? For example, in maths, Sajal got 90%. Very good. How do you calculate the actual marks? See, it is 90% of 150. 150 is the maximum marks in subject in, in maths. So what is, and this 150 they have given, okay? The question has given. So 90% of 150 is equal to how much? It is 135. Similarly, in uh, chemistry, she got 60%. 60% of 130, 130 is a maximum mark in chemistry and that is equal to 78. So like that you have to find her actual marks in all the six subjects, add them up and asking the aggregate. So we simply add up her actual marks in all the six subjects which is 449, okay. What is the overall percentage of Tarun? So here we have Tarun's marks, right. We know these are percentages, not actual marks. So again, we have to calculate the actual marks, okay? Divided by the total maximum marks. You add up the maximum marks for each subject, okay? You'll get the total maximum marks, which is 600. Add up the total for Tarun in all six subjects, divided by the total maximum marks in six subjects in 200. So what is his overall percentage? It is 60 percentage, and this is how you do it. So number three. What are the average marks obtained by all the seven students? Uh, where are we? What are the average marks obtained by all the seven students in physics? Okay, how do you calculate that? Now, let us go to the question. Where is physics? Yes, so this is physics. We want to know what are the average marks obtained by all the seven students in physics, okay? How do you do it? First, find out the maximum marks in physics. Calculate the actual marks of each of the students. For example, for Ayush, it would be 90% of the maximum marks in physics. Similarly, for the others, add up the actual marks for all the seven students and then divide by seven. You will get, this is what they have done. 90% of, see they are taking it all together. This is for Ayush, this is for the next person. 120 is a maximum mark. Then they are adding each one of them and then they are dividing by 1 by 7. One, sorry, they are dividing by 7 because there are 7, some, seven students. Right? You will get 89.14 percentage. Okay. The number of students who obtained 60% and above marks in all the subjects is what? It's very simple. Now they have already given us a percentages. So look at Ayush. 
has he obtained above 60 percent in all the subjects no because chemistry he scored only 50 what about aman aman no because in geography he scored we are asked to find who scored 60 percent and above in all the six subjects so sajal yes she scored 60 percent in chemistry and above 60 percent in all the other subjects rohit yes he also scored 60% and above in all the subjects. Muskan, no, because she scored only 50% in history. Tanvi, no, because she scored only 40% in history. Tarun, no, because he scored only 35% in chemistry and 50% in physics. So only two people scored 60% and above in all subjects, which are Sajal and Rohit. Okay. Where is it? Yes, Sajal and Rohit have scored 60% or more in each of the six subjects okay okay now in which subject is the overall percentage the best now we see remember we found the uh, overall percentage uh, in uh, physics similarly you have to find the overall subject overall percentage in each of these subjects the way we did question number three same way it will be a bit time consuming but we have to do it we don't have a choice uh, they are showing a shortcut you can even do it shortcut uh, where you take the percentages right for each uh, student in each subject and divide it directly by seven we can do that because the maximum marks in each subject is obviously the same for each student so just add up the percentages for all students in maths for example and divide by example and divide by seven because there are seven students you'll get the uh, overall percentage uh, in maths similarly for all the other subjects and you'll see that the highest percentage is in maths okay um, yes so we have finished question number four okay moving on to number five the bar graph given below shows the foreign exchange reserves of a country in million US dollars okay it's not very clear from 1991-92, that is one year, 1991-92 is one year, to 1998-99. Answer the questions based on this graph. So this is foreign exchange reserves of a country in millions of US dollars. So these are in millions of US dollars. So for 1991-92, it was 2,640 million US dollars. For 1992-93, um, uh, it was, wait, let me just enlarge this yeah it was 3000 uh, where are we 3720 million dollars and so on okay let's see what questions they have what do you mean by foreign exchange reserves okay foreign exchange reserves is the amount of foreign currency that a country holds in order to conduct international trade that is in order to import or export goods we need foreign currency why do we need foreign currency suppose if i want to buy oil from russia i have to buy oil and i have to pay them correct they will not accept indian rupees they may not even accept the us dollar okay they want the payment in the local currency which is rubles so how can i arrange rubles i should own i should have some rubles in order to pay them pay them isn't it when i buy from them that's why I will hold some rubles with me, whatever be the amount. That is called my foreign exchange reserve of rubles. Like that, I will hold many other foreign currencies. Okay, it's like saying, um, you know, in your, uh, it's like saying you have different foreign currencies in your purse, and uh, that that is the same as the foreign exchange reserves of a country. A country has different foreign currencies with it so that it can buy goods from those countries okay okay so foreign exchange reserves in 1997-98 was how many times that in 1994-95 so in 1997-98 it was 5040 million us dollars in 94-95 it was 3360 uh, million us dollars what we simply have to do is divide 5040 divided by 3360 no need to find the percentage just simply divide see you will find the required ratio as 1.5 that's how you do if they ask you to find a percentage you will multiply this by 100 okay 
what was the foreign what percentage were the foreign exchange uh, reserves in 1997 uh, of the uh, I mean the foreign exchange reserves in 1997 were what percentage of that in 1994-95 if that was a question the same thing into 100 okay but for this question this is a way of doing it. no need to multiply by 100 what was the percentage increase in the foreign exchange reserves in 1997-98 over 1993-94 so in 1997-98 we saw that the foreign exchange reserves were 5040 million us dollars okay what was a percentage increase so it would be foreign exchange reserves in 1997-98 which is 5040 minus the foreign exchange reserves in 1993-1994 which is what 2520 so it would be 5040 minus so it would be 5040 minus 2520 which is equal to 2520 divided by 2520 in 200 why am i dividing by 2520 this 2520 is the foreign exchange reserve in 1993-94 they are asking what is the percentage increase in the foreign exchange reserves in 1997-98 over that is from the foreign exchange reserves in 1993-1994 or we can also say what is the percentage increase in the foreign exchange reserves in 1997-98 compared to the foreign exchange reserves in 1993-1994 whenever they say over or from or compare this becomes your base here the quantity here or the item here will become your denominator in 200 because we are comparing this to this we discussed this in one of the previous questions read the question very carefully okay Number three, for which years the percentage increase of foreign exchange reserves over the previous year is the highest and they have given you the years. So very simple, for each year what you have to do is take the foreign exchange reserves, for example in 1992-1993, okay, which is 3,720 million US dollars minus the foreign exchange reserves. Let's take a look, yeah. So for 1992-1993 if we are doing Take the foreign exchange reserves for that year, which is 3,720 million minus the foreign exchange reserves for the previous year, which is 91, 92, which is 2,640, divided by the foreign exchange reserves in the previous year, because we are looking at the percentage increase in one year over the previous year, or compared to the previous year, or from the previous year. Remember what we discussed here, same thing, and then div uh, multiply that by 100 do that for each of the years that they have given whenever you're given such long questions always look at the answered options start from working start working from there so that you don't waste your time on other years which they may have given okay they may have given more years but they're only asking for these five years so start calculating only for these years because that's where the question is and then find the answer okay you'll see that the answer is uh, the first option itself 1992-93 which has the highest number of uh, the highest percentage increase okay now, okay number four the foreign exchange reserves in 96-97 were approximately what percent of the average foreign exchange reserves over the period under review first what you have to do is find the average foreign exchange over the entire period of eight years take the foreign exchange reserves for each year add it up divide by eight then look at the uh, foreign exchange reserves for 1997 90 sorry 1996 1997 which is what 4520 million us dollars so this divided by the average for all the eight years into 100 will give you the answer now see they have given all eight years here right but in the previous question, they are only, they in the answer choices, they have only given five years. So instead of working the, uh, instead of starting the working for each of the years, do only the years that are given in the answer options, because the answer options are only this, not the entire uh, period. Okay, just some tips I'm giving you. Question four is clear, you will get uh, 125 uh, percentage. Okay sorry it is 4320 not 4520 it is 4320 million us dollars okay 
the ratio of the number of years in which the foreign exchange reserves are above the average reserves to those in which the reserves are below the average years is what okay so what are the average reserves we got it from the previous question 3480 okay now what they are asking is find the number of years first in which the foreign exchange reserves reserves are above the average so which years are they above the average it is one okay um, two and three only three years it is above average and below average it is how many years let's check obviously it has to be five because the total should be eight one two three four and five okay so what is the uh, ratio it will be 3 is to 5 right simple it's option number C be very careful I know that there are 5 years there are 8 years out of which 3 years for 3 years the foreign ex uh, reserves are above the average and I said automatically the remaining 5 would be below average but that need not be correct because in one year for example it may be example it may be equal to the average so always go through always check again before arriving at the answer okay we'll continue in the next lecture we'll start number six in the next lecture so until then please keep practicing because it only makes you familiar it'll also give you help you understand the question without that you're not going to be able to do anything all right so practice and all the best see you next time